And boys and girls try to fill their lives with when they don't have God. That's right. Right. Come on. When they don't have the Spirit of God in their life. Mm -hmm. And you can try to fulfill it, uh, that boy with all kind of things. But could I tell you that because of the soul of man that was created him by God breathing the breath of life into the nostril of man. He became a living soul. That that boy can only be filled with God. There is a desire inside of man to worship someone or something. Amen. Amen. Man, man, whether you admit it or not, you will worship Someone or something. That's right. Why? Be because of that that was created in you. Amen. Because of that living soul that is within you. You may channel it in the wrong direction. You may go this way. Or you may go that way. But when we began to channel our worship and our praise toward God, we began to feel what we felt around here this morning. Huh? We begin to realize that we are loved of God and that we have been redeemed. But it's something. The psalmist began to write, and he says, As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Why? Because there was something created inside of him that he had to worship God. Amen. Yes, he did. He had to find God some way, somehow. He said, My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? You know, we've got too many people trying to avoid the presence of God. Thomas was writing, he said, when, when, when can I go and appear before God? He said, My tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me, where is thy God? That's what that's what the world is going to say when you go through troubles and you go through trials. Where is your God? That's what the king asked Daniel. Oh, Daniel, was, was the God that you serve continually able to deliver you from the mouth of the lion? Oh, Daniel, the hard back will king live forever. Where is thy God? He said, when I remembered these things, I pour out my soul in me. <coughs> For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise with the multitude that kept holy day. He said, I went with them to the house of God. He said, with a voice of joy and praise. He said, while they were worshiping and praising all around me, I said, they're crying. I said, they're feeling sorry for myself. <laughs> I said, they're down and out. He said, there was joy and praise going on all around me. Come on. Huh. See, sometimes we do that. Some of us block God out so much that when we're in the house of God and God's moving, and people are worshiping and people are shouting, and you're sitting there saying, I don't feel nothing. Why? Well, it's because you haven't let Jesus get a hold of you. And he said, Why art thou cast down on my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. How I many know you got to praise him in the bad times as well as the good? How I many know you got to praise him when you don't feel like praising him? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm? Well, I just don't feel like it today. Get over it. <laughs> uh -huh. Amen. He's still the same God as he was when he was on the mountaintop. Right. He said, For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Why? Because he's created to worship. You're, you, you were created to worship. You were created to worship. Look at Psalm 63. 
verse 1. Again, the psalm is writing to the psalm of David. He was in the wilderness of Judah. He said, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. He said, he said, I'm longing for you. I thirst for you. Church, we ought to feel that way every time we come to the house of God. God, I'm, I'm longing to come in contact with you. I'm thirsting for you. I, I, I want you to get a hold of me. I need something when I come to the house of God. That thirst was created in me. That longing was created in me when I became a living soul. Thomas is writing, Oh, while I, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where the water is. To, look here, look at what he said. To see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. He said, I've been there. Yes, sir. I've been there when your glory fell. I've been there and saw your power. Yes. I've been there and felt your presence. I've been there. The so I said, now I want to see it again. <laughs> I want to see it again. I want to feel it again. I want to feel it again. How many of you has ever felt the touch of God that made you want to feel it again? Every one of us in here will it. It ought to be something we long for. It ought to be something we strive for. It ought to be something we worship for. How many know that and we've seen it, we know it before. Why? Because we've experienced it. How many know that when you pour out your heart to Him in worship and praise, He pours out His Spirit unto you? Yes, He does. Hmm? But He said, I, I long to see your power and your glory as I've seen it in the sanctuary. He said, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus I will bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. Why? Because I was created to worship. I was created to worship. See, we could, we could eh, 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 preach all kind of sermons on, on uh, life. Philosophy. Prosperity. But no, it don't matter if I don't feel Jesus. Right. Right. Huh? No, they don't. It's just words. It's just, it's just words. You know, it, it, it's, just, it's just something that might make me feel good for a little while. But when I'm coming to the house of God, and I make contact with Jesus. Right. I come out. I come into the house yeah. of God and begin to do what I was created for. Yeah. Begin to worship Him and yeah. begin to feel His presence and His power. Then I can leave here stronger than I came in. Yeah. I can leave here with joy in my life and joy in my heart. I can leave here different from the way that I came in. Right? Amen. Right. said in verse 8, My soul falleth hard after thee, and thy right hand upholdeth thee. Me. My soul falleth hard after thee. How hard are you following after Jesus? But oh, it's such an effort to get up on Sunday morning and go to church. It's 
such an effort to be, yeah. You know. Yeah. Such an effort. No, my soul falleth hard after him. Why? Because I've got to come in contact with him. I was created to worship him. I've got to carry my worship and my praise into the sanctuary to bless him. I'll lift up my hands in his name. Amen. Created to worship. Are you are you fulfilling what God created you for? Yes, sir. Somebody said, well, it's not all about the worship and the praise. Yeah, but it helps you get where you need to be. Amen. He showed us help the situation a whole lot. Going back to Psalms 40, verse 1. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined unto me, and He heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goals. I wonder sometimes it, 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 how little thanks and, and praise and worship that we give God for the blessings that are in our life. I mean, how, 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 how little praise. How little worship, how, you know, how, how little thanks we give Him sometimes for all the blessings in our life. And especially when He's brought us up out of a horrible pit. Huh? And that, that pit of sin that we were in. He brought me also up out of a horrible pit and out of the fire clay. And He set my feet upon a rock. And I'm glad I know that rock is Jesus. Yes, sir. He established my goings. And he had put a new song in my mouth. Come on. Praise God. He's put a new song in my mouth. Some of you have been singing, singing the same old song for years. Come on. Why? Because somewhere along the line you failed to get out of the rut that you was in. Amen. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. <laughs> Deep, dark, depression, excessive misery. <laughs> Same old sad song. Same old sad song. You need to let God put a new song in your heart. He had put a new song in my mouth. Hmm? Amen. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Now wait a minute. <coughs> you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. Yes, sir. All right. If he's, then I've got a witness with that new song he's put in my mouth. I've got a witness with my praise unto him. And then what does it say? Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Right. See, sometimes I don't have to say a word. All I got to do is leave it. Praise him. Worship him. Sing a new song. Many shall see it and fear and trust in the Lord. Praise God. Look at Psalms 102. Verse 13. So thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. And you've heard me say it before a lot of times when you study Zion out, it's a, it's a type of the church. And later, down through time as it did involved, it could be came to represent the church. Uh, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion 
For the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. Praise God. Praise God. How many know God's got a set time for everything? Yes, yes he does. Yes, he does. How many, how many know that God's already got a set time for the rapture to take place? That's right. Huh? <clears throat> but right now, the Bible said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time has come. I don't know about you, but I can feel the favor of God in my life. I can feel the favor of God upon the church in these last days that we're living in. I believe it's our set time for God to do His wonders and miracles and bring revival like never before. Yeah. Because the time to favor the church, yea, the set time has come. Set time has come. Look what it says. For thy servants take pleasure in their stones and favor the dust thereof, so the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. Huh? When he builds up Zion, he, he shall appear in his glory. I don't know about you, but I long to see the glory of God yep. in this yep. house of God. I long yes. to see the glory of God fall. Yes. Praise God. I, I long to see the Holy Ghost sweep through this place yes. from one side to the other. Yes. Where you can't stand yes. up under the power of God because the glory of God is still the Lord. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. But look at, look at verse 18. This shall be written for the generation to come. Can I tell you with that generation? This, look what it says. This shall be written for the generation to come and the people, notice this, the people which shall be created. I'm that people. Amen. Right. Why? Because the set time is come for the favor of Zion, the favor of the church. This shall be written for the generation to come. This generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. And the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. Yep. Right? I was created to worship. I was created to praise the Lord. Amen. I'm that generation. I'm that generation that was created to worship and praise Him. How? How? How was I created to worship and praise Him? I'm glad you asked. John, the fourth chapter, verse 19. And the woman said unto him, Sir... I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. In other words, what he was saying, he said the way you, you've been used to worship is going to be turned upside down. It's going to be different from now on. It's going to be different from now on. He said, You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation of the Jews. But look at verse 23. But the hour cometh, and now is. And now is. When the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship Him. I was created to worship Him. I was created for this generation. You were created for this generation. You were created to praise the Lord. Amen. I didn't have it down, but I could go back, I could go back to, to, to the book of Acts where, where it was talking about that this generation, this, this Gentile, the people whose name that's called over. In other words, the Gentile people would build again 
the tabernacle of David. You know what the tabernacle of David was? It, it wasn't no big, big fancy temple. It was a, it was a tent. It was a tent that they pitched and brought the Ark of the Covenant back into. And the Ark of the Covenant represented the glory of God. And they brought it back in and set it in that temple. What, what happened then? David set up the worshipers. He set up the singers. He set up those that would praise God. He, he set up those that would play the instrument. He set up those that would sing. He set up a house of worship in the tabernacle of David. He said, these things that were destroyed, this generation shall build again those things. The tabernacle of David. We're that generation. We're that people. This is what we were created for, was to create a house of worship that people could come into and find refuge from the storm outside, could find some kind of help from the problems of the world, some Amen. kind of relief and revival in this last day. We were created to worship. We were pre created to provide an atmosphere that somebody could come into and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Praise God. Notice, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father and Spirit and the truth. And I want, I want to touch on something here because people get, get kind of confused. I have people say, oh, did you see them tonight? They wasn't in the Spirit. You know, this is not what that means. But it says worshiping in the Spirit. No, 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 I want you to notice something. That spirit there is a capital S. Right. The Bible says that we're to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Or the spirit of man. The spirit of man. I, I got a soul in me. I got a spirit in me. So my spirit must worship the Father. In, I must worship Him in spirit and in truth. What's the truth? Jesus said, I'm the truth. So if I worship Him in spirit and truth, that means it's with everything that's within me, with my spirit, I'm worshiping His spirit. Why? Because the next verse says, God is a spirit. Yes, He is. And they that worship Him must worship Him with everything that's in me, with, every, with my heart, soul, mind, and strength. With everything that's in me, I worship Him in spirit and truth. Because God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him. Must worship Him. You know what that word must means? It is a necessity. Look it up from the Greek. Must means it is, a, it is, it is necessary. It is necessary. It is necessary. It is necessary. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Praise God. Why? Because we were created to worship. Yes. That's right. Hmm? Yeah. We were created to worship. Yes. That's the reason He created a man in the beginning. To worship Him of our own free will. I can't make you do it. God won't make you do it. Sometimes He'll make you wish you had. Yes, sir. But he won't make it. So I've got to love him enough. I've got to love him enough. So some people say, I love God, but you never see them lift their hands in worship. i got to love him enough that whether I feel anything or not, I'm still going to worship him because I love him enough. He still created me. He still saved me. He still filled me with His Spirit. That I love Him enough on my own. Huh? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So you were created to worship. You were created to worship. And I tell you, fulfill that reason in your life that you were created. You'll never feel the fulfillment that you want in this life. Or the satisfaction that you want in this life. That's all standing.
created to worship. God, don't let me leave here today without putting forth some effort to worship you. Yeah, amen. Uh, whether it's just the lifting of my hands or the clapping of my hands, because I, I, I love you, and within my spirit, I'm going to worship your spirit. Because that's what I was created to do. The hour cometh and now is that the Father seeketh. He's looking for somebody that will worship Him that way. Simply because they love Him. Praise God. Simply because He created you to worship Him. Come on, let's gather around front for a closing worship and praise as they sing.